So flashcards have been a pretty traditional way of replacing physical media in consoles and video gaming systems, things like that, for quite a while now. And some good examples of that are this, which is my Kung Fu flash cartridge for the Commodore 64, micro SD in the top and plugs into the cartridge port on the Commodore 64 and lets you play, you know, all of the different uh, cartridge ROMs, even some disk file formats. Another example would be like the R4 here. This is the uh, R4 3DS for the, obviously the 3DS, but there was the R4 for the regular DS before that and a variety of other ones and so forth and so on. Now, right now I'm in the middle of, spoiler, testing a uh, Mega CD and I want to run the 240p test suite cart, but I don't have a flash cart for my, you know, Sega Mega Drive. And I don't really want to order one right now because I'm kind of lazy and I just want to get it done. What I do have though is a really crap cartridge copy of columns and just a crap ton of uh, spare EEPROMs. So I think I might just mash these together until I get something. So yeah, let's do that. And there is our cart. Now what I do know about this is this cart in particular uses this 1715927 PCB uh, revision. This That means that this is a one megabit mask ROM that follows the JDX standard um, for one megabit ROM files. And that pinout matches pretty much exactly to what we've got here, which is all of these ones down here. These are uh, ST Microelectronics M27C4002 EEPROMs. The only difference is this is a 128 kilobyte uh, mask ROM. So there will be a bit of a size discrepancy that we'll have to work through. So I'm just gonna take this out really quickly with my desoldering gun and uh, move on to the next steps. Well, my desoldering gun heats up. I can actually show you as well. One of the nice things about these carts is that although they are double-sided, you can see that the, uh, the through holes for the cart are not. So the solder holding this on is only on one side and that makes, well, will make very easy removal. I won't need to worry about um, solder getting up through the plated through holes and yeah, okay, I should just be able to zip the solder out of these joints and then just the chip should basically just fall straight out the board, so. Yeah. Lift straight out. Nice. And there's our PCB. And I just noticed that there's no marking for the orientation. So before we move on, uh, just grab a Sharpie and mark in one. There. Cool. All right. Now, the other thing that we're going to need to note is because this is a much smaller uh, ROM size than what I'm intending on putting on, um, it also does mean that some of the pins aren't connected. So these three pins right up here, these are uh, address lines, uh, I think it's 16, A16, A17, and then uh, VCC and you can see that they're all bridged up there. So those address lines are permanently pulled to high and I do not want that because I definitely know for a fact that A16 is definitely needed on the uh, 4002. And the other thing is that pin obviously isn't connecting to the PCB here. So we're gonna need to figure that out. Uh, now I don't have the pin out off hand, but I'm gonna guess it's one of these unconnected pins here. There's one here, there's a bunch here, and there's a bunch here, and there's a bunch here. So I'm gonna go grab the pin out for the cart connector, figure out exactly which one of these uh, edge pins is the address line that I'm looking for, and then we'll connect it, or, you know, reconnect it up. Okay, so I've just had a look at the schematics. Well, not the schematic, the pinout for the cart and the, uh, the mask ROM and the EEPROM that we'll be looking at. And what we're looking for is pin 16, A16 here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it is this unpopulated one. And that is address line 17, which confusingly connects to address line 16 on the uh, the ROM. Uh, and that's just because the, the ROM and the cart are offset by one because address line zero in the uh, system is always ground. So, you know, these start at A1, but it's actually A0 on the, the ROM. And yeah, it's just offset by one. So A17 connects to A16 here. And I'm gonna do that by hooking up that wire there, that pad there to this point on the PCB right there. And I'll have to cut that line. So let's do that really quickly. Okay, so let's just start cutting. Okay, 
and I just want to clean that up so it's a nice cut and make sure that we actually take away the copper fully yep and those two pins are now disconnected great Cool. Okay, and now we just need to get a wire from this line here all the way up to there. I'm just going to use a little bit of bodge wire for that, so a little bit of this stuff should do the trick nicely. Now what I'm going to definitely want to do is avoid getting too much copper, uh, too much solder on the edge connector, otherwise I won't be able to, you know, insert it. So what I'm going to do for that is just use a little bit of uh, Kapton. Just going to lay it down about there. Okay. And I'll just put a couple of safety pits around to make sure I don't hit any of the other pins. Like so. So that pin now, just the very tippity top is exposed. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is just have that dangling for now. And uh, once we've got the, the ROM, the, the, the PROM, EEPROM programmed and ready to go in, uh, that'll just get soldered on the back. And that will give us our address line 16, or address 17, that the bigger PROM needs to address more data. So let's go program our EEPROM. Okay, so it's time to uh, program our EEPROM. So here's the EEPROM that I'll be using. It's the same one that I listed, uh, I noted earlier, the, the 4002 uh, 4 megabit EEPROM. And what I'm going to be using is the 240p test suite, which is, you know, a homebrew piece of software that was originally um, designed for, I believe it was actually for the Mega Drive, and then uh, expanded to the SNES and a whole bunch of other systems um, in order to do 240p testing, provides like uh, test patterns and things like that, but it's also now expanded to a whole bunch of different systems and hardware tests, varieties, memory tests, all that kind of crap. So anyway, I've downloaded it there, um, I've expanded it to this directory here, and now what we need to do is get that onto the EEPROM obviously. got my XD Pro programmer thingy here, it's EL8662, uh, and I'm using the XD Pro software. What I noted before is this is a 512 kilobyte uh, EEPROM, and as you can see here, the bin file for the, the actual programming code is 256 kilobytes, so it's actually half the size. What we can do if we really wanted to is with some switches and things like that, we could uh, control that upper byte or the upper bit, the address line, I think it's A17, and switch it between banks one and two effectively, the first 256k and the last 256k, and we could actually put two images on this EEPROM so that we could use that cart for two different things. I don't need to do that. The, the cart as it is, as I've shown earlier, the, you know, the, I didn't scratch off that second uh, address line for A17 or A16 or whatever it uses. Um, so it's always going to be high, which means it's always going to select the first or the last, I can't remember which one it is, only one of those 256K. But what I do want to do is make sure that we have the same image in both of those two halves. And to do that, what I'm going to do is just in my little terminal here, so we've got the two files there, what I'll be doing is I'll just be concatenating that file onto itself. So one, two copies, so list out the file twice and write it to a new file, let's call it 512k bin. And then if we look here, we've now got a file called 512k bin and it is exactly 512 kilobytes in size. So it's just the same file doubled over. We load that file into our programmer. Yeah we can see that it actually fills the full length of the uh, memory space. Uh, now what we need to do, as you can see here, that ESAG, this is a flipped ROM, so we need to go up into File, and then Fill Block Swap, and just do Swap. And we're swapping on the 16-bit word, and now it is aligned, the, the bytes are aligned correctly. I'm not 100% sure on the, the why as to that, but you just, it's just a step that you need to do. There it is, Sega Mega Drive 240p test suite. Uh, we've got our chip selected as the M27C4002, which is the right one. Just do a blank check to make sure that that EEPROM is actually blank. What it does is it just reads and checks that they're all Fs. Yep, because you can't write an EEPROM that has data on it, you have to erase it first before 
yeah. Uh, and then we will program. And that's it. Program, come back in a couple of minutes, takes a little bit of time. Uh, then it'll verify, and if that's all good, then we'll pop it over in the cart and give it a try. Alrighty, here's our EEPROM fresh off the presses. Uh, I'm not going to put a little sticker over this because I'm just going to put it back in the case. It doesn't really need to be protected, but uh, normally you would want to put a little sticker over the, uh, the window there to avoid UV erasure. Um, now though, let's get this in the thing. We just, there's our mark from earlier, pin one. So there's the notch on the EEPROM, which should go in there. Also, I'm avoiding putting this in a uh, socket because otherwise it'll be a bit too fat, too tall, and it won't fit back in the cartridge. And I don't really want to cut the case up because it's only going to serve one purpose. Um, and like I said, uh, while I was programming, I'm not going to put another, like a switch or something in here for the other address line uh, to switch to the other bank because I only really want this to do one, one thing and one thing only. If I really wanted multiple ROMs, I would actually just you know, shell out and get a proper flash card. But yeah, let's uh, let's pop that in for now. So just uh, tack down one of the corners and the other corner. Just quickly verify that it is nice and flush. Yep, perfect. All right, now let's get that wire tacked in as well. So we'll do the same as before. Just going to melt the uh, the varnish on the surface there, put in that pin, do the one next to it while we're here, and while holding that pin very carefully, I should probably use some tweezers for this, yeah let's use some tweezers. Just going to reflow that pin and set the wire down inside it. And there we go. Now all I gotta do is just finish tacking in all the other pins. I'm gonna do that really quickly. A little bit of tape to hold the wire down properly. There we go. And we're done. All right, so now, just pop that back in the case. Screw it back together. Let's give it a test. Okay, here's our cart. There's the screen. Plug it in. Flick it on. What do we get? A. Hey. Yeah. There's the 240p test suite. Let's grab a controller. And there we go. So. Let's uh, run off the hardware tool. Let's look at a uh, RAM test. Why not? Yep, perfect. Checks out fine. So that's it. Didn't have the effort to wait for a EverDrive or a similar flash card to arrive, so I just hardware hacked one of the existing cards that I had uh, plenty of and didn't care for. Uh, send your hate mail to the comments below about damaging a, you know, an official uh, cart, but now I've got a test cart and I can proceed with my uh, existing project. Thanks for watching.